communicate with an adjuster without also communicating with my client. Agreement number three, I will be an active member of the restoration community. I don't believe in competition. The restoration companies in my market are part of the same community. We are the same team. It is our unbreakable unity that will create the change that we strive for. Agreement number four, I, will, I am willing to walk away from any project client agreement that is not compatible with my company or personal values or stated mission. No relationship, business or personal, is worth taking part in if it requires losing money, sleep, or humanity. Uh, that's them. Um, it's funny how I want to speak and I'm going to push mute. It's funny how one of these standards always seems to come up throughout the week or every few weeks. Someone was asking me the other day, and I think it was a private message, maybe it was a phone call, that they don't agree with the I will never give free estimates. And that's why here in parentheses in the, in, in the standard that's printed on our page, it's only from comparison. If you want to give your customers, if you've got an agent or an adjuster or a realtor that gives you a lot of work and needs to be a free estimate, hey, you know, knock yourself out. What we're talking about is not be a patsy or a gopher for the insurance carrier world to go out and undercut another contractor who is you know, pricing it their way with their own price list. Listen, maybe they're too high, maybe they're too low, maybe there's some shysty guys, but I think that their work product is going to be the thing that kills them. It doesn't need to be us as fellow contractors. So I think I explained that to the person the other day. I don't know if anyone agrees to me. If you want to write a free estimate to your customers, hey, we do it all the time. It, it happens. But I think the standard is not saying that you'll do it in a way that cuts a restoration contractor and strengthens the position of an insured while they're trying to make more profits and just keep you on a leash and feed you. So yeah, it's not, that's it's my not two cents on that whole thing. It's not the free estimate. It's the free comparison estimate. And there's very, very big difference. So right. yeah. And, it's, that's, it's and, that's, that and that's why it's written no, in there. Yeah. The estimate that you have no intention of doing a job anyway, you're just doing a favor for the adjuster so he can undercut somebody else. That's that's what that's talking about. And I wanted to say one more thing. Another one of the standards, and I think we've all chewed this one to death. I don't believe in competition. I think those of us on the East Coast and in the Northeast right now, I know I can speak personally and tell you I have gotten from my competition over $180,000 worth of work in the last three to five days. So if you don't believe in competition, if you don't believe that Restoration 2.0, that we're onto something, you might not be playing the game the right way. But I will tell you that I think that anyone that's here is probably looking at their neighboring contractors a little bit differently than they were early last year. Oh, yeah, Chuck Clark, I'd like to just chime in on that. Yeah, You know, I ran into a situation where I needed indirect fire heaters so my guys could – actually work in the crawl spaces and uh steve hall um with uh mason dixon service came and saved my ass and uh i've been using uh that heater now ironically for water damages that have been coming in so um i just i just think the world of them and it's all because of uh restoration rebels yes sir thank you you. you know, Clark, uh, you guys say that you're good in the Northeast. I actually think we're better in the Northwest. Oh, wait, we're not supposed to be in competition. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm talking about this specific mini cat. Of course, the, of course, the Northwest is great, but I'm talking about this specific event, of course. But of course, we're also better than. <laughs> okay, I digress. That's rule number five. We just hadn't written it yet. Rule number five, the Northwest wins every time. Sorry. What else are we going to talk about from this week? I think there was um... – oh, by the way, uh, Andy is eating a meal right now using the money that he sold everybody's phone numbers to encircle with. That's all he got for everybody's numbers was about $4.96. Uh, smart move. Did you at no. least get us a good – group deal i don't know oh, they can get any cheaper i mean i i, I don't think so 
Yeah, and and I'm uh, kidding uh, about that, guys. Uh, Clark, you know, Clark, there's something I wanted to ask. Clark, I, I got something I wanted to ask. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, and, and you can tell me if we need to table this, but uh, there was a post that I just uh, glanced through, and um, it was something along the lines of um, – not pushing uh, either products or services that somebody was using. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. I'm not sure if that um, if that had to do with a particular franchise model. A lot of us were talking about, or um, or something else entirely that I missed. But I just want to make sure that uh, I'm on board with what with what you were saying there, so I don't you know uh, yeah. step out of my lines making a comment yeah. that uh, is. A, Go ahead. Well, okay, so I want to talk about that, and, and, and I'll let anybody can chime in. I won't go into too much. So there's a really – it's a really blurry line. So while we don't want to have – and I know what you're talking about. There was a certain – there was a certain topic, and it keeps coming back up, and I think Andy asked me if I was going to use the rolling eyes emoji about talking about a certain brand or, or, or network or something. And I don't have a problem with that, but what I do have a problem with is – we do have this no sales, no product, no pushing of your own personal brand thing. But those, those topics are coming up from people asking, hey, I've heard about this. Would this be a good thing for my business? So that in and of itself seems to be an innocent plant. But what, what, we're, getting, what we're getting wind of, and I don't know if it's true or not, and I'm just going to be real transparent with everyone here, we're getting wind of that sometimes those – planted topics are strategically placed there by people that have a vested interest in doing that to cause that conversation. I don't know that I completely buy off on that. I'm seem to be the one that's always paranoid, but it's, it's just a blurry line. So we can all sit here and say, we love procure and we love microband because it does a really good job, but that doesn't mean we're trying to push and sell that. We're not gainfully incentivized to do so. Um, so it's really, I don't mind talking about in circle. I don't I mean if, if listen, if it makes our industry better, if it makes our jobs easier and us to do a better job of helping our customers, I'm not against that. What we're what we're against is just turning this into a, a swap meet of everyone peddling their stuff. And 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 that can quickly that quickly can turn into that. But I know Andy he raised the bar on Saturday for one week for one day only, Sunday, Monday. One day only, Sunday fun day for everybody. Just drop it, drop it like it's hot. So, um, is that what you're talking about, Robert? Yeah, I just, yeah, I, I think so because um, the topic, you know, that I think we're both talking about, um, I had a very personal experience with, and uh, it was, it was very, very good. I mean, it turned out really good. So, I just want to, I want to make sure nobody's not encouraged as much as possible to not um i don't want to say promote but give an honest testimony to um to a system that really worked and keeps um companies away from being dependent on insurance tpas to give them work you know so it I know not everybody may have a good experience with uh, that particular system or others, but, um, you know, I wanted to voice my opinion because it was uh, life changing for not just my family, but everybody's uh, family in the company. Well, in a I, positive way. I I'd get like to, that. Yeah, go ahead. I get that. I'd like to give you my, ahead, my two cents on it. And here's, here's my take. If someone has a question about a particular product or software, or something, who is better positioned, who is in a better position to describe it and talk about it? It's obviously going to be that person or that company. So if Procure or In Circle, I mean, let's just talk about it. It's In Circle. In Circle came up a lot this week. And it wasn't people from In Circle trying to bring it up. It was other people asking about, hey, what do you know about In Circle? From my opinion, from where I'm sitting, that's an open invitation from anyone from In Circle to answer that question get in on that conversation because that's why we're here to have those types of conversations and then PM private message people that want more information. But, but that's, that's, that's an open, that's an open invitation. In my opinion, 
Now, what it's not an open invitation for <laughs> is for people to start putting their logos and spamming every day and, you know, treating our Facebook feed like it's Twitter and, and some sort of billboard. And that's what we're really trying to get away from. And I think we've done a pretty good job so far um, because I've been in other groups. Other, there's a lot of tons of other groups out there. And it's turned into a big old show me show um, swinging unit, you know, contest. And, you know, that's not what we're about. We're about real good information, quality information from quality contractors. And if, if someone really has the inside scoop, I think there's, there's no reason we can't, we can't support that. Now, um, Chris Rosinski did post something in the group just now, earlier this afternoon, that I think crossed the line. And I'm going to have a conversation with him. But I think given the, cir the circumstances of, hey, we've been talking about them all week. So what was he supposed to do? Just sit on his hands and not respond? I, th I think he responded in a classy way, a classy non-spammy way, and we're going to let that one go. So that's my that's my two cents. Well, Andy, let's I'm going to go ahead and call it out. This we're, what we're talking about is one eight hundred board up. Is that right, Robert? That is. Okay, one eight hundred board up. Let's go ahead and talk about it. I disagree with a little bit. I think yes, the person that sells that product might be very well, or the people that sell, or the people that were associated with that company, they are great reporters of the value but but people don't want to be sold by the people that are selling it sometimes they want to hear about it from their colleagues and i think that's what robert's talking about but here's what i say so we don't it can quickly turn into a much bigger thing and it becomes a platform for we become a a, a an affiliated 1-800 board of let's save it for if they want to sponsor the summit come out to nashville and 200 people can show up and everybody can sign up that's that's the value because that's the money, the nonprofit that we're going to build, the money that we're building and putting together from this summit will go forward to propel this to the next thing, whatever that's going to be. So that's, I get it. And I hear you, Robert, but uh, I think it just could quickly turn into something that a lot of people have voiced that they don't want this to be a sales page, but it's a, it's a blurry line. Like I said, I may not be right. Andy may not be right. And I'm glad we're talking about it openly. Okay, cool. Thank you, guys. Just so you know, what came out of uh, the one post where I had uh, mentioned that Exactware had purchased Restoration Manager, and uh, people were voicing their opinions, and I'm I'm pretty outspoken on things, and I had mentioned some things about Dash. I use Dash, and uh, but I told the the good, bad, and the ugly, and I I still really like dash but just so you know what comes out of some of those conversations uh when you have your own testimonials about these products um i, I know the owner of da or the ceo of dash and uh some of their salespeople, and they both reached out to me today they're actually i think they're worried about what exactware is doing with the restoration manager and, and I think they want to make their product better. And so those are the types of things that I think are good that come out of our group is when we, it's okay to complain. It's okay to say the good things too. And hopefully these guys are listening so that they can private message you or email you. Um, anyways, I see it as a real positive and hopefully they, they better. Their well, let's take it. Let's take it to one more place. Um, is Whitney here? Is Whitney here? I, I thought I heard Whitney. Him. Okay. Well, Whitney, Whitney's the uh, director of the founder of NORP. And he has done several um, webinars, demos, openly on his page for, let's say, job docs. And, of course, Actionable Insights, who's a friend, Mark Wally's a friend of ours as well. He does it for, he chooses to let them come on because he thinks there's enough value there for his, his members. And I, again, that's where I'm a fan of. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of that, but maybe I'm not the best person. And I'm not the only one making any of these calls, of course, but maybe collectively we talk about how do we better police and govern that in the right way and make, well, I think, and you, I think we, need to, we need to make space. I think we need to make more space. And maybe that's an interview, a one-on-one -on -one interview style, it doesn't happen on something like this, but it happens uh, you know, maybe 
maybe on a different night where we do invite these people that the members have brought to us and said, this is an important part of my business. I would, I would like to share this with, with the group. And maybe you or I will interview these folks and we'll, we'll just get down to the bottom of it. Hey, what, what are you about? What do you have to offer? I think that, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Again, we could offer some, some FaceTime and, and that way they get to get that energy out. Um, and it's, it's not kind of hid, hidden. I don't know, what do you think? You need to charge for that, bro. <clears throat> we need money for those, uh, um, All right. those advocate groups. Washington, you know. I don't have a I don't have a problem asking. Hey, Mr. Sweet. I think that's a good idea, Andy. And I think you have to make it open to whomever so that nobody feels like they're being uh you know left out. Um if if you do that uh how do we make sure that no one is left out or is it just know. they, they have to come to us and say that they want to i think I it's don't think have, we don't we yeah, don't have to be we don't have to be so democratic do we i mean i think it's got to no. be it's got to be alignment with what we do here of course yeah. um, someone reaches out to me or clark or someone in the leadership group and says hey i'd i'd like i'd like to present some information to the group what? just make it happen and are you going to be that tough CNN interviewer? <laughs> are you going to be Anderson Cooper? I can be tough. No, I, 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 I want to also say that if any member of our group, any of our 1,300 people come to anybody and say, hey, I have an interesting company that's a good you know, a fit, I, I don't want it to be just leaders. I want it because we only know what we know. I think anybody in the group, I see Nathan Raymond over there. It looks like he's in a – looks like he demoed out his ceiling. Um, but uh, I, I want someone because you guys come across as many or more people as we do, or you know, we're in different kinds of businesses. I'm unfortunately not in the field nearly as much as some of you. But again, I wouldn't have known about In Circle if I had not been part of this group, and and they seem to be really, really changing a lot of people's companies. So um, I think I think we're onto something there, and I think maybe there's a platform for that, and there could be. There could be people nominated or invited in or something like that. I don't know. Why don't we use it to our advantage? Take a, maybe a couple, like you said, Andy or Clark, take a look at them. You think it's a good fit. And if they're willing to do a sponsorship for our next summit, then we'll give them some air time and they can set up at the summit as well. Can we give them a double, double thing there for them to. Well, There's a great idea. I'm going to make that happen. Drop. So, I mean, they commit themselves to the summit. They're going to, you know, help sponsor it. And then by doing that, they're going to get some airtime here and down at the summit as well. All right. Executive decision. Done. I'm going to make that happen. I'll start, I'll start reaching out. I think, I, think Hawaii, I, think Hawaii, I think Hawaii has brought a lot of good, good ideas to Bob oh, yeah. and Christine. He's thinking very clearly. <laughs> he has clear as head. <laughs> So, and yeah, they're willing to step up and sponsor for the summit. I think that's the least we can do is, is give them some airtime here, but it's going to be on our terms. It's going to be an interview style, and it's going to be controlled because, well, it's, it's got to be a little bit. Hey, who's, uh, who's new? Who's their first, first time here tonight? David Olson. Why don't you introduce yourself to the group and tell us where you're at and what you're doing? You're going to have to unmute yourself here. Parker's younger brother. There, I let me. There you Is go. That work? Do you have me now? Okay, good. Well, I'm uh, Dave Olson, 35 year veteran of the fire and water damage restoration industry. Uh, second generation, started in 1981 on the truck. Um, found out that uh, this type of work is in my blood. Um, was a franchise owner on two franchises, a master license holder for Surpro Industries, uh, sold out in 2011 due to divorce, took about three years off when hunting and fishing, um, missed it too much, came back to work, I was too young to retire, spent uh, two and a half years at PuroClean as uh, Vice President of Operations and Training, um, spent a year with Dry East last year helping them set up a uh, 
national franchise system for roof tech services. I went to India for them. And now I'm helping Carson Construction in Savannah, Georgia, a three generation construction firm that has decided to divest uh, uh, some of their construction, general construction, and enter into the restoration industry. Uh, answered a uh, application on Indeed, uh, met Walter, and uh, basically drove 3,300 miles, and now I'm basically a general manager. I'm wearing the seven, hat, the seven hats of service because we're so new, and I'm very excited to delinquish some of, give some of my hats to some other people as we go. That's my history. Welcome, man. Welcome. What, uh, what, what drew you to the group? Why, why the Rebels? Why now? And, and what were the alternatives? I struggle. Um, I was part of the system that created, helped create TPAs. I was part of the system that kind of also put Dash into a little bit of a prominent place, being VP of operations. I understand the challenges and the things that you or guys are up against. I saw the challenges that TPAs put on our new franchises that didn't have deep profit to uh, p and some profit analysis and business plans. They were, they struggled to get on programs. So um, I, I've never really been a person that likes being told what to do, even though as part of a franchise system, as long as I made my goals, they pretty much left me alone. Um, I believe certain people need a franchise because they're not necessarily, it, um, diverse in all applications of owning a business. Um, I kind of, I've known Blaine for a long time uh, up in Washington State when he worked uh, with Mark Johnson out of Spokane. So I know a ton of people in the industry and I was just kind of intrigued by what you guys are doing and wanted to sit back and I've been following you for about three months now and, uh, and Blaine asked me to join and here I am. Good for you, man. Thanks for... Thanks for being here. We've got, it, it just humbles to me how much experience we have in the room every time we get a group together like this. So many people, I mean, you started in the eighties. I was in grade school and you were sucking water. It's just, it, it's something else. We, we, uh, the, now is the time. I don't, it's, it's, it's amazing. This was going to happen whether I started or not. This needed to happen. The energy is out there. I think you're exactly right. The, the industry has done it to themselves, and now we're trying to figure out how to unscrew it. And uh, so, we're, yeah, we're, we're starting down that road. Thanks for, thanks for joining up, David. You're welcome. Thank you. Who else the first Steve? time tonight? We met, Steve, we met you last week, didn't we, Steve Williams? Yes, sir. Um. Hey, Andy, I wanted to talk about two things. Um, I still have not Sorry, listened to it. Fun. Sorry. Well, okay, I'm going to pick it real carefully. One kidding. thing. Tell us, give us a quick recap of the interview last week. What was that about? How did that go? I didn't get to listen to it. The uh, interview it was, you did with, was, with uh, uh, was it Tim? It was Tim Williams with uh, Business Development Associates. And he said he just, just wanted to get to know what are we, what are we about? Why do we exist? And it turned into a really interesting conversation. I didn't know what he was going to drag out. Um, but it, it came down to the, we, we're, it, we're in a mature market, very mature industry. And this is the time when every industry that gets, reaches this level gets disrupted in some way, shape, or form. So whether, whether we came to the front or somebody else came to the front, Somebody needs it, needed to come to the front because we're all endangered. And it was, it was very, it was interesting conversation. I need to re-listen to it. Um, and he actually sent me a new link. So I'll repost that in the group. But it, yeah, it was an hour long. It was, it was a long one. And it really, it, it, it's a, it leads into the article that's going to come out in R&R Magazine next, um, next month. I wish Michelle Blevins was here. She could talk about R&R. Right. But, uh, it's it's you know, it's it's about why are we here? What is this energy about? And and one of the things uh, I'm, I'm hesitant to go down this road, but I'm going to do it anyway because that's the who I am. If 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 the our other associations, the existing associations in our industry, 
had done their job, if they weren't asleep at the wheel, we wouldn't be necessary. But the fact that we are necessary, it is necessary for us to get together in this shape and fashion and, and make things happen this way, means that the existing power structure is, has failed. And, and I think Mr. Olson touched on a little bit, the, he's, the franchise has had a lot to do with that. Now they realize that, that oh shit, this system doesn't work for us anymore. Um, how, do we, how do we reel that back in? but we didn't have a mechanism as an industry. We don't have a mechanism to advocate or make this sort of change. And I've said to multiple people on a leadership level of other associations, the reason I exist, the reason we exist, is because we can say and do things that you want to, but you can't. Because you don't have the political will, you don't have the authority, you, know, you don't have the, the committee won't let you say it. You know, no committees here. It was, anyway, it was, it was a good, Good long conversation with Mr. Tim Miller. He's he's a he's been around a long time as well. One of the one of the old guys of the industry. That's your one thing. You got another you got another question, Clark. Maybe. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what it was. And you told me I only had one. <laughs> I don't it's been that kind of week. It's been that kind of week. But I I'll 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 leave it there. I think Ben wants to bring something up. All right, Ben, how about it? So I, I posted about it already, but I've uh, spoken to a few people that are on the board for the RIA. Uh, I think they really appreciate this group. I think they really appreciate that uh, we were pretty well represented at the Strictly TPA event. Um, I think Andy made a good impression on the leadership there. Uh, I talked to Josh Hobbs specifically. Uh, he asked me to to reach out and extend an invitation to the Rebel Group. Uh, they obviously think we are necessary, and they would love it if more of the Rebels got involved in the RIA. And so um, they definitely want to see our presence uh, at the conference. I think they would like to see us uh, join some of the committees uh, and, and be a voice. They think we are absolutely necessary. We're not the same, and they realize that as the RAA. Uh, the RAA has its place, and I think we need to, this is my opinion now, I think we need to support the RAA because they're that type of organization that can get us to that point if, if we get enough members to where we can have some lobbying power. Uh, I don't know that that's what this group is all about. I think we're the grassroots, and I think we are very necessary, and I think the RIA sees that. What's great is is that we're just, you know, this group is being recognized. I mean, it, it's definitely a fire that's caught on. You know, to be honest, when I, when I first met you, Andy, and, and I heard about this whole thing going on, I was like, is Andy doing this for personal reasons? You know, is he trying to promote? what his business is. And, and I, I was very cautious when I went to Bend, Oregon, totally uh, surprised, uh, happily surprised. And, and uh, what I saw in the venue and, and how it was organized, totally impressed. And, and so I feel like I certainly want to have a place uh, here with the rebels um, you know, I, I didn't necessarily want it to be tied in. And now it's like, heck yeah, I, I want everybody to know that, man, I want to do rebel estimating. I want to do rebel O and P. I want to do, you know, rebel whatever, just because it's needed. People need to know that uh, this is needed. Anyways, to tie it back in with the RAA, um, guys, that that is the association that I think takes us forward. <laughs> There is obviously uh, very professional people there. I think some of the most professional in the industry. However, they have their ways, right? They've, they've, they've got some old thinking and, and it's not necessarily the, what we want as the rebels, but I think if we represent better, they may, they may change their mind or guess what? some of us could be on the board next year 
and we start changing the direction and, and really start doing some things that we've been wanting to do for a long time. I was on the membership committee and, and hey, I've been trying to figure out ways to uh, get better benefits, have a local or regional setup. Um, but some of those things are being shot down because of some of the leadership that's there. So I think we need some youth. I think we need some new ideas. And I think that comes from this group. <clears throat> Go ahead, Mr. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, and and to, that, to that end, Thank you. Um, we're at kind of a historic moment with the RIA in the sense that there is a a known changing of the guard that's progressing currently. And it's creating a leadership vacuum and someone with agenda is gonna fill that. And the only people that are gonna serve are people that have agenda. I'd love to see it be people that are coming out of our rebel nation, moving into those spots so that we can take and shift. Now, I, I will say this, and I, and I was talking to somebody about this earlier this week, they're frustrating like any large organization is. Any large organization is difficult to do, but I will tell you that they've done the one thing that no one else can historically is for the last 30 years, they've managed to keep a bunch of people who have very different perspectives together as a group and move the ball. Um, not that they aren't necessarily tired and uh, could use a break at this point, but this is a unique thing within our industry because most of us behave like wet cats that are angry. Um, so this is a, a historic moment to actually become part of something that can change from there. And I, I think that Dave posted today a little bit earlier about us having influence in other places with the intention of spreading our message out to a wider, broader audience. And I think this is a great place for people to plug in to do it. Yeah, and my biggest problem is the speed of change. We don't have the time. We don't have the time to send social media responses to committee to formulate what the best response is to a social media post. You know, the, 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 the glaciated pace of, of things is, is just outmoded. So if, if we can get somebody in a leaders, leadership position that they can move the ball faster because that ball is moving fast, whether or not we want to realize it or not, I, I could, that's something I could get behind. Yeah, Andy, I got a question. And, and David, keep um, up with the great animal analogies. You're just a treasure trove. Wet cats. All right. Sorry. Go ahead, Nathan. Um, <clears throat> you know, the only platform, I guess, social media platform that I've ever known in terms of the restoration industry um, has been the Restoration Rebel. And for good reason, obviously. <clears throat> a lot of what happens here is in tune and in line with my daily struggles as the restoration contractor. And my question is, is, you know, if the IRA and all these organizations have been around for such a long time and we're, we still are where we are right now, I mean, I, you know, I, I, this is the only group that I see that's pushing the agenda that's going to change my life day to day. And the people here are share the same struggles as me. So why should I buy into the old guard and stuff? And oh, we're going to, you know, uproot it and rebrand it and regrow it and stuff. I mean, this seems like the right organization from the get-go to build upon and stuff like that. It just seems like uh, switching out old guard, uh, usually that's kind of something that takes a long time and, um, you know, there's a lot of undoing old habits and stuff like that. I think all the right habits are right here. That's, that's a legitimate question. I am not qualified to answer that question, but I bet Ben or David are. And actually, David raised his hand first, so go ahead. Can hear you, David. How very unrebel like to raise a hand. Um, I, I want to make it clear, guys. I'm not suggesting we don't continue to pursue our agenda. <clears throat> I'm just suggesting that it's it's a good idea to have as wide influence strategically as you can. Um, a presence in five or six of these boards where we can we can begin to address perhaps the glacial pace that things get taken care of. And I agree that it is a glacial pace. Um, the, the types of things that they're pressing, the environments and how welcoming they are to people of diverse opinions, those are kind of things that you can only shift from the inside. Don't stop doing what we're doing here. Um, 
but let's see if we can't be strategic about other places that we have influence because we have people that have reach into those spots. Ben's one of them. So my thought on that. So David's exactly right. And, and Nathan, what, what we need to do is, is plug ourselves, not just into this, but into, into all the organizations. Uh, the reason why the RIA would be the platform for some other things, I'm not saying everything that we need to do, but the RAA, uh, they have hired an organization that manages associations, national associations. They know what they're doing. Uh, we don't. I mean, we, we are a group of people that are like-minded. Uh, there is, I mean, if, if the agenda of this group is to at some point have lobbyists, great. But I, I don't think that's what we are. I think we're very grassroots. There's also an organization called the PIRC. Uh, that is a platform for the carriers and the contractors to come together. And not many people know about it. I found out about it uh, at the last RAA event. But contractors and carriers actually sit down at the same table and hash things out. <clears throat> and it's very small because not many people know about it. We need to spread the word and we need to be involved in that as well. Uh, so it, it's, there's, there's different settings for different things and the RA is just one of them. Uh, we don't set standards in this group. The RA is a place where you can set standards in those committees for either contents or uh, mold or, you know, they, they have some of the most highly reputable people in the in their organization i think and we have very highly reputable pe reputable people here as well but none of us i think don't really have that experience to make those standards stuff like that no, so and that I, organization I exists for education and, and awards and and hopefully at some point lobbying uh where I think we're different. I think we're grassroots and, and we're the organization that needs to get involved in these different things and have our own message. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Can you get, yeah. Can you, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to shut my computer down. Ben Justison, I just made you the host of this meeting. So this meeting should continue. Uh, but they're kicking me out. <laughs> I've got to leave. Uh, but I'm going to stay on. I'm already, I'm still here. So just so you know, if, <laughs> if this crashes, actually I've got, you know, right there. I'll, be, I'll still be, there's, oh, look at that. that. That means I have to stay the whole time. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I got I to gotta shut this down. And you got to let uh, David Terma in, uh, change him from attendee to uh, promote him to panelists. Uh, all right, I'll uh, hopefully still be on here. So I'm shutting this down. Did you say David Terma? Yes. Uh, I want to know if he comes in here because I owe him a thank you. Oh well, he's he's listening. He just not he's not a panelist. Um, I I'm not sure how to do that, Andy. All right, make me a host again. Click on me and make me a host. Yeah. Did the ginger ninja bail again? Yep. He's bad about yeah. that, man. He said he got a job. He got a job. Man. Did that do it? Uh, no, I am not a host yet. Guys, I'm all for letting, you know, let loose the, the dogs of war. But I'm, I've also in my, you know, Clark and I are getting up there. And maybe a couple of the others are the rest of us. Um, <laughs> man, I'll, I'll tell you, strategic warfare is exceptionally effective if you know how to do it and do it well. Um, and most things are not changed overnight. Most things aren't revolutions like that. Um, and I'm as frustrated yeah. with the rest of it as you are, because I only have 15 years till I retire. Yeah, but so I, I want this to move as fast as anybody.